Grinding out being a counter puncher is about playing your, your shots that have the highest percentage. That way you're cutting down on your errors and you're going to start forcing your opponent into making choices that you already know which way they're going to go. So let's get into this a little bit deeper. Is one, most of you probably know that the width of the court on a singles court is 27 feet. The length of the singles court is 78 feet. So when you hit across the diagonal of the court, you've got about 83 feet. So you've got about five extra feet. Now, granted, it's not the same as, you know, it's going out to a point, but still you've kind of got a curve there where you're going to have between 78 and 83 feet. So you've got more room. The other thing that is pretty basic, but it helps to also just keep into your mind, is that the net at the edge of the court is three and a half feet and three feet in the exact middle of the court. So one thing that a lot of players assume is when they're out playing is that pretty much every shot is equal. But that's one thing similar, and so we're gonna be talking about a little bit more about playing cards and that kind of analogy, because it's a really good analogy to help you understand the probability and the statistical analysis of playing out points. So just like when you're playing poker, not every hand is equal. Same thing when we're playing, not every shot is equal. Sometimes some shots are worth hitting and other times they're not. So we have to make sure that we're playing the best shot that is for us. And so a lot of times when you play a better opponent, they're gonna force you into playing a shot that you don't wanna hit and they're gonna be hitting shots that they want to hit. So keep in mind, 83 feet on the diagonal of the court. So going cross court, you've got more room and a lower net that you're crossing. That's pretty basic, most people do understand that. Now, how that's gonna play in, we're gonna to get to that in a minute. Another thing that's very huge that a lot of people don't necessarily consider, but it, it's very important to understand is that your racket is a flat surface. So a lot of people forget about the fact that our racket is a flat surface. So when you're hitting the ball, the ball wants to bounce off your racket if it comes at an angle, it's gonna bounce off at the complementary angle. So, a lot of people forget about that. And that's one of the reasons that you've, you've probably experienced this yourself. Somebody hits a ball cross court, you go over to hit that ball, you intend to hit it up the line, and you miss the ball wide. You miss the ball wide because you didn't account for the angle that the ball wants to bounce off the racket. Now, you say, hey coach, it pockets it and I'm moving. Yes, but it's still flat and for that millisecond it's still you can kind of move it a little bit, but it's still, its natural path is to bounce off your racket the way the object should bounce off. So when it comes straight on, it wants to go straight back. And so that's why a lot of times you've heard from coaches, it's easiest to hit the ball back to where it came from. Because it is, because as the ball is bouncing on your racket, it's bouncing straight back. That's a lot easier to control. You've probably also heard a lot of coaches talk about that when we try to change direction, that's when we make a lot more errors. Because we, not only are we trying to change the angle of the ball, but now we have to account for the angle that the ball is coming in. So that's why there's a lot more angle, there's a lot more problems when we're trying to change the angle of a shot. So that's also helpful to understand, is that your racket's a flat surface and you have to account for the angle that the ball wants to bounce off your racket. So a lot of people not, have not necessarily heard that. That's one thing though, that once you start to understand and you'll see it when you're playing your point, it'll help you reduce your errors as well. Now. The other thing that we want to start doing on the court itself is breaking down the court into these three areas. Basically, you've got the outside of the court, the inside of the court, and then the outside of the court. You know, and so what I like to think of them, and so those are kind of the general terms that a lot of you know tennis lingo there. But I like to think of this as my forehand cross court corner, just the middle of the court, and then the backhand corner, or even my inside out forehand corner. So I've got pretty much my forehand corner, middle of the court, backhand corner. And so I wanna see the court in that way. And then the other thing that I also wanna start seeing too is pretty much the back court and then the front court. So I wanna be operating most of my shots, trying to keep my opponent deep. That way I'm gonna keep the pressure on them by keeping most of my shots in the back court so that way they're not able to come in. And so then I'm gonna see these targets. And that's another thing that's gonna help you guys when you're playing your points is always see that target. So that way you've got more of a specific spot to hit your ball instead of just the whole court. 
because again, not just hitting the ball over the net and into the entire court is good enough. We've got to start hitting these smaller targets and see them as boxes in your mind on the court. By hitting those boxes, it's going to give you a more specific target to kind of really focus in on to help make you make a better shot. The other thing that we want to think about is what is our ranking of our shots? So again, I was talking earlier about not every shot is the same. It's kind of like cards. Not every hand is the same. And so you need to understand the ranking of shots. And so we're going to be talking, making a lot of generalities for right-handed players, for lefties. It's still basic. It, you can convert it over. Um, but we're going to be mainly talking about right-handers for the purpose of this video. And so one thing to understand is as a right-handed player, typically my forehand is stronger than my backhand. You know, I don't think there's very few players. I mean, there's some that, you know, they say their backhand is better than their forehand. Even if it is stronger, if your backhand is stronger, you're going to see that it's still to your advantage to play your forehand more. So my forehand is going to be, I want to play it more than my backhand. And I'll show you why here in a little bit too. So if my forehand is typically stronger than my backhand, which is true for most players, now I need to decide what shot is even stronger is my for, let's break it down even further. My forehand cross court or my forehand inside out or just a forehand in the middle of court. So for most players, again, my forehand inside out is going to be a little bit of a stronger player. And so why that's going to be a stronger player or a stronger shot, I'm sorry guys, why that's going to be a stronger shot is because if I'm over here in the corner hitting this ball, now I'm hitting my stronger side, so my forehand. I'm hitting it inside out. I'm going to go over the lowest part of the net. And I'm also going to be hitting it to the longest part of the court. So I'm hitting my stronger side over the lowest net and the longest court. So it's going to give me the greatest chance of making that shot. It also happens to be to most players backhand, which is their weaker shot. So if they're not necessarily a smart player and you're able to hit that ball and they just stay in the middle of the court and they allow you to hit the ball to their backhand, now they're over here getting ready to hit a backhand. Now they've instantly been given a choice. They can either hit the ball back where it came from, which as we just said, if the ball bounces on a flat, that's going to be the easiest shot, also over the lowest part of the net also the longest part of the court, or they're gonna be faced with hitting, trying to take the ball down the line, which means that with their weaker side, their backhand, they're gonna to have to change and, and account for the angle that the ball is bouncing off their racket. They're gonna be going over a higher part of the net, and they'll be going down a shorter part of the court. So for most players, the best choice for them is to just go back where the ball came from which so happens to be where you just hit from. So that player now either has to decide, do I hit this backhand back cross court to where you already are, or do I hit this ball down the line to where you're not? Now, most players, a lot of them, if they don't know the percentages and they don't understand all those things we just covered, their initial reaction is without a hesitation just to try to rip or win or down the line. And I'm gonna, t and you guys know, if you just watch, a lot of times, what tennis players tend to remember the one shot that they made or the one shot they got burned on maybe, but they tend to forget. So it's like, you know, I get over here and bam, I ripped that one winner down the line and it felt great. But I tend to forget the like eight other shots that I just missed. But I remember that one shot that I just nailed and it felt awesome. So I'm going to let them try to hit that ball down the line. And so as a player too, what I'm going to do is after I hit this inside out forehand, I'm not going to go back to the middle. I'm going to hang out more over on this side because I want to kind of bait them into trying to hit the ball down the line. The other thing too is if they do try to hit that ball down the line, all I have to do is within one, two, even three, I can cover most of the court. So that gives them a very small window in which to really hit that ball. And because I've hit that ball across the court, the angle is going to be so great into the racket, it's going to want to bounce off at a complementary angle. The ball is going to want to go wide. 
And I promise you, you guys start implementing this. What you're going to do is you're going to rip an in, you're going to rip an inside out forehand. If you get it good to their backhand, they try to rip it down the line. They're going to miss it either clip the net or they're going to hit it wide most of the time. But if they don't, so say they are successful in hitting that ball down the line. Again, all I got to do is get over here, cover. If I'm able to get set up, that's great. But I just got to get here, and without a hesitation. See, and this is where it becomes kind of like I said, that boring tennis. Without even thinking about it. See, I've already got a plan, you know. And so to go back to my our movie to talk about our uh, poker movie grinders there. You know, one of my favorite quotes is they talk about the guys that don't have a plan are losers. The guys that have the plan are the guys that win. And so when you go into a match, do you have a plan? Do you have a gameplay or are you just reacting? See, so many players are just reacting. It's like they're driving their car standing about two feet in front of the hood. They're just reacting. You know, their opponent hits the ball, they chase it down, they just try to hit it back. They hit it, they just chase it down, they hit it back. See, we want to have a game plan. And by doing that, we're going to be more steady. We're going to make less errors. So without even thinking, if my opponent can hit my inside out shot down the line, I'm going to get over here and I'm going to hit this ball cross court. And the reason is that ball's coming down the line. It's going to be easier for me now to change the angle because if I do over hit it, it's just going to hit it a little bit more cross court, which is allowing me to hit that ball again to the longest part of the court over the shortest part of the net. So I've got more room for air. So if I'm going to change the angle, I want to change the angle going across the court because it gives me more room to miss. Also, once I hit this ball cross court, now they've got to move across the court. They're cutting across the court. I can hang out again more in this area. I'm going to recover just a little bit because if they're smart, their best shot is to take it right back here. But I've forced them into another decision now. They have to decide, do they bring that ball back cross court to me or do they hit the ball now down the line to my backhand? And now that gives them again all those same issues. Shorter court, higher net, changing the angle, and now they're on the run even. So their chance of making a successful shot keep dropping. If I hang out in this area and they hit the ball back cross court, if they hit it back over here, I'm going to try to hit the ball back cross court again. Now a lot of you say, well, why wouldn't you hit that? Why would you hit that ball back cross court? So again, if we go down our rankings of our shots, forehand inside out is going to be my number one shot that I want to try to hit because I'm hitting my best side lowest net, longest court to their weak side. The second best shot that I can hit is my forehand cross court. I'm hitting my best side, shortest net, longest court, but now I'm hitting it to their probably their best side. My third best shot that I can option for me is going to be my backhand cross court, my weaker side, but lower net, longer court. And then Probably the lowest percentage in the shot I don't want to hit that many of, but a lot of people love this shot, is backhand down the line. If I hit that backhand down the line, now I'm hitting my weaker side, higher net, shorter court, and a lot of times you're changing the angle. So if I hit this ball over here again to my opponent, and now they're running across the court, they're forced with the decision. Do they hit the ball back to me or do they try to burn me down the line? Again. Most players, if they don't know the dimensions of the court and they don't know the probabilities, they're going to try to smack a winner down the line. Now, are they going to make a couple? Yeah, sure. They're going to make a couple, but you don't freak out. So again, that's part of being a successful grinder, a really good counter puncher, is not freaking out when you lose a few points. Again, the mindset is not to freak out, but it's the long haul. So again, I'm going to play those odds. Just like playing blackjack or poker, you may get burnt every now and then. But as the percentages play out over the, you're going to start to win more points. So that ball comes down the line. Again, if I'm over here, I can run, I can cover, I get over here, I hit. I don't even have to think about it now. If, they're on, if they just hit a ball from the forehand corner down the line to my backhand, now what have they just opened up if they hit the ball here? They've just opened up their backhand side completely. 
So now all I have to do is just roll a backhand cross court. Now they're back hitting backhands again. I'm already in position now for the next shot. So I'm not running side to side like they are. Now they have to sprint back across the entire court. Now they're forced with that decision again. Do they hit that backhand down the line, try to hit the winner? Or do they hit that backhand right back to me? And if they hit it back to me, I'm able now to hit this forehand again back to their backhand. And so during the course of a match, a lot of times, I've played matches where my opponent, they're just hitting backhand after backhand after backhand after backhand after backhand after backhand. And you can know as a player, if your backhand is weaker, how demoralizing that is. You start to feel defeated. You start to get frustrated. You start to get really angry. You're like, why is this guy just hitting it to my backhand? And then you start to play that side more. Which now, what does that do? That opens up an easy cross-court winner, or even now the down the line. So when am I going to go down the line, coach? That's a good question. So I'm going to play the ball basically cross-court or inside out if I'm able to hit a good shot. And they're hitting, you know, mid-range shots. Now, as the ball gets shorter into the court, that's when I'm going to go in, I'm going to hit the ball, approach down the line, I'm going to attack. But most of the time, what's going to happen is if you lock into this mindset, you're not going to even get that far. They're going to miss after two or three hits. you know. And so once you start making them run, and here's another drill that you guys can do too, is just go ahead and just have someone hit every ball down the line, have the other player hit every ball cross court, and you see who does more running. So the player that's hitting cross court is not going to be running nearly as much as the player that's hitting down the line. So again, you just sink into this mindset. When I get the ball over here, I'm going to rip it cross court. If I hit a successful shot, if I hit a nice deep backhand, I'm going to stay put. I'm not going to recover to the middle. You know, and so that's one of the things I see a lot of players doing is recovering to the middle, but they recover to the middle because maybe they've just been told always recover to the middle. But the only time I recover to the middle is when I don't know where the ball's going. I don't like to play points that way. I want to always have an idea of where the ball is going to go. So I'm telling my opponent, you need to hit the ball to either one of these two spots. So now I've eliminated having to worry about so many other shots. You know. Now you say, hey, coach, they can hit drop shots. They can hit lot. They can hit all these other shots. Sure, but those, again, those are super low percentage shots. And if I'm in position, and so if I'm over here, I'm playing most of the court as a forehand, I hit it to their backhand, they hit a drop shot. Again, now I just run in a straight line. I've got most of the court covered as my forehand. They hit a short ball, and I can put it, if they're in the backhand corner, I can put it away cross court. So you can see I'm starting to cover now the majority of the court with my forehand making that, forcing them into hitting more backhands, which ultimately most of you guys know, if I'm sitting in the corner hitting forehands all day and they're hitting backhands all day, who's gonna win that match? I think we know who's gonna win that match most of the time. Now, if they got a really good backhand or they're left-handed, now we just kind of switch things up. So instead of inside out forehand being my number one shot if they're left-handed, now my cross court forehand is gonna be my number one shot. So if they're left-handed, I'm gonna be now playing most of my shots cross court to their backhand. And now we just kind of go the opposite way. So now hitting my backhand cross court, is not. I'm not gonna wanna do that as much because now I'm hitting that right to their forehand. I'm gonna be trying to go cross the court to their backhand and forcing them into playing that backhand side again, okay? So work on understanding how basically you wanna separate the court into these three areas. Now, if the ball's in the middle of the court, where can I go? That one I can hit either direction. But most of the time, where do you think I'm going to try to take that ball? Again, I'm going to try to take that ball to their backhand. So midcourt balls, I try to play those to their backhand. Balls that are over here in this corner, I'm going to play those to their backhand. When they are able to hit the ball over here on the forehand, outer part of the court, I'm going to play it cross court to their forehand. I'm going to almost hope if they, can, if they try to hit the ball down the line, that's going to open up their backhand. Now I can play these two zones back to their backhand. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to allow them to make that error, I don't necessarily need to hit that winner. If I get an easy shot, I get up into the court and it's open, then I am gonna put the ball away and attack. So I'm gonna start working on these zones and I'm gonna start working on hitting those shots and that's gonna help make me make more shots and I'm gonna be more consistent.
If you want to be a successful player, it's playing those percentages. It's playing those odds. It's hitting highly effective shots with low risk. If I do that more than my opponent, who's there hitting lower effective shots that have high risk, I'm going to ultimately be successful. It doesn't mean I'm going to win every point. It doesn't mean I have to win every point. But what I have to do, guys, is just play more points in which I'm giving myself the best chance to win. That's going to make you seem like you never miss because you're out there playing the odds. And they're going to be like, wow, this guy, he's got this great strategy. But what it is is just being smart, seeing the court for what it is. Not every shot is equal. Playing the shot that's going to help you be more successful. Forcing your opponent into that choice. Making them choose, do I hit the ball down the line? Do I hit the ball cross court? But you should already know then, based upon what we talked about, what is their higher percentage shot? And then that's the shot that you want to try to cover more. Why cover the shot that's lower percentage? Let them go ahead and try for that shot because the odds are that they're going to miss. So you want to make sure that you're playing that successful shot, just like that card player, guys. Play the odds, and I guarantee in the long run, you're going to win more points and you're going to win more matches.